In the early 1900s, there were many Tejanos in Texas. Pull factors included cheap labor demands in Texas, and push factors included poverty and terror occurring in Mexico that broke out in 1910. The first massive wave of immigration was at the onset of the Mexican Revolution of 1910. Over 600,000 Mexicans moved to the United States in hopes of jobs, security, and safety from 1910 to 1930. The Mexican population in San Antonio alone grew from 13,000 to over 82,000 during this time period. Many Tejanos and Latinos that were Mexican-American citizens or Mexican migrants were discriminated against. There was voting discrimination in forms of the 1902 poll tax and the law in 1918 that prohibited interpreters from translating for voters and prevention of assisting those who couldn't prove that they were a citizen for more than 21 years. Also forms of other discrimination, such as using separate quarters and facilities. Jim Crow laws maintained segregation, but instead of just applying to African Americans as they did in most of the South, they also applied to Mexican Americans and Tejanos. Many Mexicans from the Spanish era were trying to get their claim as citizens, but they didn't want to have to give up their language, culture, or traditions. And then, in 1929, the Great Depression happened, and Tejano labor unions increased dramatically. One particular instance of unions was the United Cannery, Agricultural, Packing, and Allied Workers of America, also known as the UCAPAWA. Many pecan shellers, who were mainly Mexican-American women on San Antonio's west side, embarked on a three-month-long ordeal led by Emma Tenayuca. Emma Tenayuca was born in San Antonio, Texas on December 21st, 1916. On her mother's side, her heritage was of Spanish settlers that came to Texas early, but on her father's side, she was of Indian descent, which is why her last name is Tenayuca. Emma has been quoted saying, I think it was a combination of being a Texan, being a Mexican, and being more Indian than Spanish that propelled me to take action. The Nayuka grew up on the west side of San Antonio, a side that was struggling with various things from low-paying unskilled jobs to economic disparities to high infant mortality rates and one of the highest tuberculosis rates in the nation. Then Ayuka's grandfather played a part in shaping her socioeconomic and political views by reading her English, participating in local politics, and sharing his particular interest in labor issues and civil rights. By the age 16, she participated in the strikes against the Phoenix Cigar Company by joining them in a picket line and even joining them in jail. In the 1930s, the Nayuka became a member of the Executive Committee of the Workers' Alliance. This is the union that endorsed the pecan shellers' strike. By the 1930s, the pecan industry was the number one employer of Mexicans in San Antonio. San Antonio was also giving out about 40% of the nation's total pecan production. But despite the progress, wages were lowered by business owners. Mexicans were working for as low as $1 or $2 per week during the depth of the Depression, which was less expensive than using machines. Wages were low, working conditions were poor, the hours were long, and the sanitary conditions were very bad. It was common to find over 100 shellers at one table that was only a space of about 25 by 40 feet, for there to be poor lighting and no ventilation, so brown dust would hang in the air, and many drew the connection between the polluted workers' air and the high rates of tuberculosis in the shellers' families. An average family income of the shellers at this time was only about $251 per year. 
And then, in January of 1938, the Southern Pecan Shelling Company announced pay cuts. Workers were being paid about 6 to 7 cents per pound, which dropped to 5 to 6 cents per pound. And they went from being paid 50 cents per 100 pounds to only 40 cents per 100 pounds. This is when a walkout ensued. It became obvious that the power elite were suppressing the Tejano workers. Emma Tanayuka was the popular director of the Workers' Alliance of America, and then she became the Pecan Shellers' strike leader. She quickly became known as La Pasionaria because of her fiery speeches demanding justice for workers, leadership in sit-ins, and public battles against the work. The strike in total lasted about three months, and in between, there was a lot of police brutality. 1,000 picketers were arrested, and in some instances, tear gas was used. City officials and members of the Catholic Church, of which many Mexicans were likely to be a part of, criticized the strike. They said it was illegitimate because it was communist-inspired. Tenayuca was an easy target because of her Communist Party affiliation. The UCAPAWA noticed that to keep the supporters that they did have, then Ayuka would have to step down as their strike leader. Typically, unions didn't mind seeking help from people of the Communist Party, but being that then Ayuka was outwardly communist, they were an easy target of ridicule. The Catholic newspaper La Voz warned, In the midst of this community exists a woman by the name of Emma Tenayuca who wants to spread disorder and hatred. This woman has all the appearances of a communist. Don't give your names to her when she comes around to solicit them. Warn people when she comes around. Miss Tenayuca de Brooks is not a Mexican. She is a Russophile, sold out to Russia, communist. If she were a Mexican, she would not be doing this type of work. But those close to Emma said she had been involved in organizing and fighting for the rights of the city's poor against some of the city's most profitable industries. The UCAPAW president, Donald Henderson, took charge of the strike after Emma stepped down with the advice from CIO leader Luisa Moreno. Henderson, Moreno, and George Lambert the UCAPAWA representative in San Antonio were the ones who negotiated the strike settlements. In 1938, the CIO secured the initial wage of 7 to 8 cents per pound of pecans, but that was even increased when Congress passed the Fair Labor Standards Act that same year. This act established a 25 cents an hour minimum wage. Although they got their pay raise, soon after this, all of the pecan shelling industry turned mechanized, and as many as 10,000 pecan shellers lost their jobs. Although it may have seemed like an overall loss to some, there are many reasons why the pecan sheller strike of 1938 has significance. This was an example of a political galvanization of workers in a community. They challenged the political status quo and they succeeded in demanding change and having those demands agreed to. Then Ayuga was in no way deterred after having to step down from this strike. There was still laundry, cement, and onion workers who needed her help. In a journal entry from Emma, she wrote, on the other hand, I am going to have to face a barrage of criticisms, etc., from both members of my family as well as the so-called middle-class element. It will be some time before the matter of my divorce will have been forgotten. I am only a very insignificant little individual who, 50 years hence, will have been completely forgotten, but my divorce makes a juicy piece of gossip right now. In the late 1940s, anti-union and anti-Mexican sentiments forced her to leave San Antonio for her safety and economic well-being. Then Ayuka moved to San Francisco, where she graduated from San Francisco State College. After 20 years, she came back to San Antonio to find out that she was seen as a heroine, and later enrolled at Our Lady of the Lake University, where she earned her master's degree. Emma Tenayuka always fought for what we call today social justice. Emma passed away on July 23rd, 1999 in her hometown of San Antonio, Texas.